Happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to Polywog's Home Edition. This week, we're gonna be talking about masks. Now, masks may be new to Minnesotans, but Mother Nature has been doing masks for a very long time. Like the wood frog. If you go to a wetland area by your house right now, you can probably hear them singing. Even birds can have eye masks, like this common yellow throat. And the American badger. Now this is a cool eye mask. If you're not familiar with any of those, I can guarantee you that you are familiar with at least one of Mother Nature's masked bandits. The raccoon. Now the raccoon has a lovely eye mask. I, yeah, I know, I'm gonna tell, I'm getting to it. Yes, I'm going to tell them how to make their own eye mask. I'm getting to, yes, it won't be as lovely as yours. Yeah, I was gonna tell them about, what I was gonna tell them that we're gonna make eye masks today. Yeah, we're gonna make eye masks. It doesn't matter what they have lying around their house. I, I, you're kind of cranky. I think it's not your time of day, sir. No, it's not. I think you need to go to bed. What Raccoon was trying to tell you is that today we're gonna learn how to make either a paper plate mask or a mask that uses whatever you have lying around. But before we see how to make those masks, I'm gonna take you away from Minnesota to read a story about one of my favorite masked animals. This story is called Pindui. It's about a striped hyena who learns that being herself is the best thing to be. The sun was low in the East African sky. The animals had been sleeping all through the hot afternoon and now they began to stir. Penduli awoke before Mama Hyena, eager to explore. Don't go far, Mama yawned. We must hunt soon. There has been so little to eat lately that we will need all night to find enough to fill our bellies. Penduli promised to stay close and trotted away. As Penduli passed the water hole, she spied sleepy animals in the brush. She sniffed the air, which was rich with exquisite and mysterious smells. But something was not so exquisite or mysterious. It was the smell of a dog. Penduli's sharp ears picked up the soft pounding of pads on the dirt. She spotted a pack of wild dogs at play on a faraway ridge, and then they saw her. The leader dashed towards Penduli. The others trailed behind and yelped, Watch out, dog, it's a hyena! Just a shrimpy one, dog scoffed, coming closer. If it didn't have all that stripy fur, those ears would make me think it was a baby elephant. The pack erupted into wheezing laughter and glumped away, tongues rolling. Penduli had never given a thought to her ears. Were they really so big? She let them fall flat against her head. I can hardly hear now, Penduli thought but she kept her ears down. Uh -huh. A rumbling voice came from the scrub. Uh -huh. Penderly whirled around. <gasps> A lion! The little hyena poofed her mane and suddenly looked twice her eyes. She was sure that she was mighty fierce, but lion just calmly looked over and looked her up and down. Then he leaned his old scarred face near and said, that prickly fringe hardly becomes you, young lady. Penduli's mane flopped as she hurried away. She had never given a thought to her coat. Was it really so scraggly? Penduli circled back to the water hole, waded into the pool and let the water soak into her fur. She figured that when the water ran off, her coat would lie flat. No more prickly fringe. Zebra and two friends strolled over, their brown eyes glinting at the sight of the soggy little hyena. Penduli didn't like their amused look. She tried to lower herself deeper into the water and disappear, but she was too late. If you're going to do stripes, please, please, please work on your symmetry and your clarity. Good grooming, not soaking, will take some of that unpleasant haziness out of your pattern, whinnied Zebra. Then the three tossed their heads, dipped their lips into the water, and drank. 
turn the page. Penduli slashed past the startled zebras. It escaped into a quiet spot. Were her stripes really so disorderly? Didn't Mama Hyena always say how she was the most beautiful hyena ever? She rolled and rolled in the pale dust, which, struck, which stuck to her wet fur. Soon her soft stripes had completely vanished. Ears pinned, coat flattened, and dusted to a pallid gray, Pendula wanted nothing more than to go home, hoping no one would notice her. I'm really in trouble now, she worried. I've been gone a long time and Mama gets awful cranky when she's hungry. Don't we all, Mama Hyena? As she headed back to the rocky den, she saw lion, zebra, and dog, along with his rowdy pals, hanging around the water hole. A few wildebeest were there too, for an evening drink. My, it's busy out here tonight, thought Penduli, edging away from the others. No luck. The animals turned to see who was coming. Their jaws dropped. Their eyes bulged. Penduli looked around wildly. What did they see? A ghost! The animals screamed. An evil spirit is upon us! They jumped and ran. Where? Where? cried Penduli as she raced behind them. Feet pounded and dust flew and no one answered. The terrified crowd tore through the thorny bushes over Craggy Stone and horrified found themselves at a dead end in a small canyon. They screeched to a halt, huddling closely as they turned to face their worst fear. Dog was the first to speak. Oh, great spirit, he howled. You've come for me, I know, because I made fun of a young hyena's ears. All eyes were pinned on Penduli. Oh, so I'm the ghost, she thought. I'd better get in character before they recognize me. Go on, dog, said Penduli in a slow, deep voice. The spirits want to know why you would commit such a hideous, awful, atrocious crime. Dog's voice quavered. Ah, uh, I don't know. I guess I was still mad at Fennec Fox for calling me Butterfly Head. Lion joined in. Please spare us your wrath. I too have spread discord by insulting a young hyena's mane. But Vulture called my own mane a mange. Penduli nodded sagely. Of course. Zebra stomped her hoof. Owl told me that my stripes were garish. A tear rolled down the, her long face. Everyone fell silent. Penduli's mind whirled as she tried to think of what a ghostly spirit might say. Of course, spirits always give tasks and want offerings, she thought. Hmm, let's say, ooh, mama will love this. In order to appease bad spirits, you must find your tormentors and make peace, Penduli called out with authority, and always leave a bit of every meal as an offering. If you do this, I shall never return. She turned and glided away on her tiptoes, trying not to smile. Thank you. Thank you, called the creatures. We will do as you say. Once out of sight, Penduli raced home. There you are, cried Mama Hyena as Penduli galloped up to her. You look awful. Penduli was so glad to be home again, it was worth getting in trouble. She didn't even mind the five baths it took to get the dirt out of her fur. In fact, it took all night to get Penduli looking like a beautiful hyena again. I was worried sick. I went looking everywhere for you, said Mama Hyena as she helped smooth Penduli's coat. Now that you're all straightened up, we've got to get out and find something to eat. It's already morning and I'm sure you are as ravenous as I am. Penduli's stomach growled. That very morning, Dog, Lion, and Zebra searched the wide savanna until they found Fennec Fox, Vulture, and Owl. We have come here on the order of the Great Spirit dog announced. We must find out why you were so rude to us. Fennec Fox spoke up. I guess I was having a bad day. Ser Servo Cat said I looked like a little fuzzy bat without wings. He nodded to Dog. Your ears really aren't so bad. Vulture ducked his bald head. 
marabou stork called me moonscape. So I got mad and made fun of lion. Owl moaned. Adder said my feathery stripes look more like scribbles. Let's go find those three and get to the bottom of this, said Dog. The oddball crowd went searching and found Serval, Marabou, and Adder. We've come here on the order of the Great Spirit, they declared. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble for laughing at owl's stripes, hissed Adder. Miss Zebra, do you remember when I said your stripes were dull, mumbled Zebra. Marabou stepped forward on his stilt-like legs. Lion told me that the glare of the sun on my head hurt his eyes. Sorry, grumbled the big bald cat. Then Dog blurted, Oh dear, Serval, please forgive me. Serval's amber, amber ears squinted at Dog. You mean for the time you said that the wind might pick me up by my giant ears and blow me away? He said. Yep, Dog yipped. Who am I to be talking about ears? He pranced about, flopping his big ears like the wings of a butterfly. Serval burst out laughing and everyone, including Dog, joined in. From that day on, things began to change for Pinduli and her mother. Instead of spending hours hungrily scrounging for meager meals, they found delicious treats everywhere. As Pinduli tasted a sweet berry, she said the great spirit must be smiling upon us. Mama Hyena looked at her grinning daughter. Wait a minute. Did you have something to do with this? Laughing and feasting, Pinduli told the whole story. You're not only the most beautiful hyena ever, said Mama. You are also the smartest. The end. That's Pinduli. No matter what you make your mask out of or what you make your mask into, I can guarantee it has the qualifications of a good time. See you next week, everybody.